Hello, how did you enjoy the keynote? And we had a little break and now here you are finding yourself in this session. Thank you so much for joining me um, right here in this uh, fantastic room, which is probably your home office, hopefully. Maybe you're just on the couch. I mean, that's the good stuff about all these virtual conferences, right? You can do it from the comfort of your own home, so that's amazing. Um, I hope you will stick with me for the next 30, 40 minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about code spaces and you know what? Let's just get started. So I'm going to flip this over to my screen right here. And um, so with code spaces, if you're not familiar with it, I'm going to talk about it um, in length. So you'll learn all about it. Uh, but you can start developing from your iPad, from your browser, which is essentially the same thing because your iPad, basically, you're going to use your browser. Um, you can do it from VS Code. You can do it from anywhere and everywhere. So first a little bit quickly about me, uh, mostly because I just want to give you my contact information um, in case you will have uh, questions afterwards or you have suggestions or um, you just want to say hi, whatever. Uh, my name is Gerald Verslaus. I am a software engineer uh, at Microsoft and I actually work on Codespaces. So that's pretty cool. If you have anything, um, just reach out to me. Um, you can find me on Twitter um, if you're interested in my daily uh, live. Uh, and uh, I have been working on Xamarin Forms as well. So you'll probably find a lot of Xamarin stuff um, on my Twitter uh, as long, uh, along with uh, all kinds of other stuff. Um, and there's my email address if you uh, want to reach out that way. So let's quickly move on. So uh, here's a little thought experiment. Like whenever you start a new job or maybe you're a manager and you're watching this and you bring on some um, new person on the team. So how quickly can that person get to coding? Um, that usually takes like a long time, right? So you have to get your machine ready. You have to be able to have your account ready and log in because that's always an issue, right? Um, the, sorry, that's not something that Codespaces will fix for you. The machine has to be ready. You have to be able to log in. Uh, but from there, Codespaces can help you fix this problem um, because, you know, you will get to coding like in, in under 30 seconds, maybe a minute at at most a couple of minutes. Um, so normally you would have to like install the tool. So you would have to like install Visual Studio. You would have to uh, get all the right SDKs. You will have to set that environment variable. You have to work through all kinds of things. You have to download all the things. Um, so maybe you're limited to bandwidth. And this is even more like in the situation that we are today, right? With the whole COVID situation where you might be working from home, where your bandwidth might be a little bit more limited than what you're used to at the office. Um, so, you know, it might even be slower and you're doing hours and hours and maybe multiple days before you can set up your dev environment. So um, that is preferably something we do not want to do, right? We just want to make that good impression whenever you start a new job and get to coding. Uh, so this is just one scenario. We are going to talk through some other scenarios as well, uh, probably, uh, while we're talking about the code spaces. And you can hopefully come up with um, some other scenarios as well. Maybe you can even, um, I've, I've seen talks about a scenario where you, even before that person is hired, so um, you can use code spaces with um, with the interview process. So uh, instead of just doing the whiteboard things that get a lot of um, critique, uh, you can now just uh, spin up a code space and you will have like the, the interviewer role and the, the person being interviewed and you can write some actual code and see if it compiles. So that's pretty awesome, right? Um, so we'll talk about some other stuff as well. And that's exactly what we want to solve with code spaces. Um, like I said, no more readmes. So if you're working on an open source software project, maybe um, you have to go through the readme, the contributing docs, uh, no more of that. You just click two clicks and you're boom, you're in the code. You can work away on that open source project. Um, so first, let's take a little step back and um, establish like what is a dev environment. So if you think of a dev environment, there's like this multiple cogs working together, right? So you have the editor, which you use to write all the code. Then you have the source, which is the actual code. Then you have different runtime. So uh, if we narrow that down to like the .NET space, then you have the .NET core versions, uh, maybe the .NET framework. Um, you, you throw the debugger in there so you can uh, see what's going on whenever you run it. You have the package 
packages, the NuGet packages, the NPM packages, um, some tooling around that. Maybe you have some extensions installed that will help you write that better code or keep in check whatever you're doing. Um, you have the terminal to, to, I don't know, look like a hacker. Um, so to do all the command line stuff. Uh, oh, there's the extension, so tools, extensions. Um, but, you know, all this stuff is uh, abstracted away basically um, by code spaces um, because code spaces is an IDE that's running in the cloud. And whenever you're using cloud services, uh, a bunch of stuff is abstracted away for you. All the heavy lifting is done in the cloud um, and you can just focus on what is important. And in this case, that is the project and of course you. We just want you to be happy. We want you to be cool. We want you to um, do the best stuff in your work that you can do um, and not worry about all the rest of the things. So if we um, relate that to code spaces, um, I already mentioned it's a completely envir uh, managed environment. So um, everything is managed for you. It will be updated. It's just a container um, in case of Linux. And there is um, um, Windows code spaces coming as well, which are just VMs and still some kind of a container. Uh, but they are managed for you. So you don't have to worry about starting it up, spinning it up, taking it apart, upgrading your RAM, uh, doing whatever. You don't need to do that anymore. Anymore. You can just do that in the cloud and uh, do not worry about it. And the, the beautiful thing is you can feel right at home because um, you can still personalize it as it were running on your own machine. So uh, there's a couple of ways to do that um, because it all runs on VS Code. Um, there is the settings and the theme and, and the extension sync. Uh, so that will just synchronize between all of your VS Code um, um, instances, whether that's local or in the browser. Um, and you can also uh, do something that's called dot .files or you can uh, modify the dev container. Uh, we'll also see that in a little bit, but that will make that you feel right at home whenever you just boom start that um, dev environment. So you can develop from anywhere because like I said, all you need basically is a browser. Uh, all the heavy lifting is done in the cloud. So all you need is a browser. You get the full Visual Studio Code experience um, that runs inside a browser now. And um, you can just edit files, have all the IntelliSense, do all the things. Um, so, you know, whenever you're maybe on that uh, well-earned vacation, but, you know, stuff happens in production and um, the last resort is you uh, while you're in a tent on a mountain, just your iPad and just barely that cellular uh, data connection that you still have. They call you, um, you pop out your iPad and you just start coding. That's how awesome it is. Um, collaboration all around. Collaboration is um, right inside of all this because it's tightly coupled to LiveShare, which you might already know. LiveShare is the solution where you can just, you know, start a session with uh, a bunch of people and you can see multiple cursors going on. Uh, people start typing updates in real time, uh, debug it, um, chat with, with everyone. You can just use LiveShare together with code spaces. Um, so you can work from anywhere and collaborate with anyone. That's really cool. So all the info and also um, the way to sign up because um, at the time of recording, Ignite is going on right now. Uh, so I'm missing out for just for you to do this session. Um, but all the info and, and um, at the time of recording, this is all in preview, at least bits of it. So if you want to join that, uh, go to this link. Um, not right now, do it at the end of this session. This link will be uh, in the slides a couple of times over. Um, but you can go to this link, sign up, and there's also more information on like how to use this, um, some questions you might have, some information about the pricing, because during the preview, it's all free. Um, but you can imagine that, um, you know, it's in the cloud, so there's some compute, there is some storage, involved um, so there is some cost involved but that's probably a fraction of whatever um, you're spending on machines and and def um, lost time setting def environments up right now I'm not going to talk about pricing in detail just find it yourself and there's probably going to be some changes whenever this uh, goes to general availability but um, you know just to uh, put it out there um, so let's just have a look actually I'm just going to uh, close these slides and uh, this is actually the website that I was just talking about. I'm not going to read this all to you. I um, 
um, um, think that you can all do that yourself. Um, so, but what I want to do is quickly scroll down. So here you can see all the tools. You can do the browsers. You can do Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio 2019. I'm going to show you that here. Um, and well, simplify workflow. Okay, very nice, very cool. Um, sign up for the beta. So that's something that you probably want to uh, do whenever you get out of the session. And here we have some FHQ um, kind of things. Um, so can I leave it open? Available for all repositories? Yada yada yada. Um, so let's just let's just dive in here. Um, on my account, I have this uh, very simple. I have it forked from Martin Woodward, uh, who is working at GitHub actually. So this must be good, right? Um, so I have this project. It's a super simple project, um, just ASP.NET Core, um, and it does some nifty ASCII art things. Uh, we're going to see that in a little bit. Um, so the way you get, imagine that this is just a open source software project that you come across. Like um, the, the, I was surprised actually, I was uh, wanting to update something in the Microsoft doc. So the documentation pages from Microsoft. And um, I had this ability to just do the code spaces way. So I tried it actually with that as one of the first. And um, I opened it and it was really cool because I found that they had put in some extensions that were automatically installed whenever you work on the docs, which come in very handy because it gives you some kind of formatting and layout and hints how to write certain things. Um, so that was really, really cool. Um, so let's see how they set that up. So imagine that this is an open source project that you're finding out about. You want to get started, but normally, typically, you would have to set up uh, all kinds of dependencies. Maybe um, you, uh, in the process, you bring break some things that you need for your day job, uh, which is all far from ideal. So we just have this typical um, typical repository. It can also be a private repository because it's integrated with all your credentials in GitHub. So uh, that all works. Um, and here you have this, this code button right here at the top. So you probably have that already. And if you click it open, then there's the info on how to clone this uh, Git repository uh, with your favorite cl Git client. Um, you can open with the GitHub desktop client, Visual Studio, download as a zip. But if you get into the code spaces uh, preview, then you will also have have this button and uh, see like open with code spaces. So um, if I click that, it will tell me right now that there are no active code spaces. Um, so I can just create a uh, click a new one and it's going to open. You can see, boom, this is already like a window that represents kind of um, the VS code um, layout. So it will just clone that repository in this um, uh, VS Code kind of instance in the browser. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit and uh, you can see the extension GitHub browser wants to access the GitHub account. Uh, that's my username. So allow, so all my credentials are being set up. Um, boom, there we have the editor. Uh, now for some reason, I think that is something has to do with the preview bits that I'm on right now. Um, it has to reload this VS Code instance uh, once more to load all my extensions and stuff. So let's wait a little bit for that to happen. Okay, so here we go. The reload is going on. Um, sorry for that. That shouldn't happen in, in your experience. And um, again, I'm not quite sure why this is happening. Um, and here we go. So uh, this is like the experience that you, you should get automatically. So it starts installing like the things that are um, um, suitable for this project. So it starts installing the C-sharp dependencies uh, for Linux because this is a Linux code space, uh, OmniSharp, um, some other things, Razor language service because it sees it's ASP.NET. Um, so that's all great. Let me just close this for a little bit. And it also opens the readme file. So I think one of the uh, objectives basically of code spaces is um, eliminate the need for that readme file. I mean, the readme file is not going anywhere, but the readme file is basically just this big wall of text normally where you go like, okay, do this to set up the environment. Well, it has some piece to set up your environment, do this, do that, install uh, this specific version, else it won't work. Um, we don't need that anymore because we just did click, click, um, and within what was it? 30 seconds, under a minute, we have this repository cloned. It's right here in this Visual Studio Code instance in the browser, and I can start coding. Um, so actually, let me make a change right now. So yeah, let me make that change first. So here we have uh, any questions. I see this is still uh, Martin Woodward. So let's make that to uh, into my own username. So we don't bother Martin for um, all the stuff that I'm, I'm creating here. I don't have the CI set up, but I'll, I'll leave this now anyway. 
um, save that that's done you can immediately see here in the the, the git pane of things that um, it has a change um, and also like I mentioned earlier uh, the terminal so okay is, is that part of it as well well let's see I can just go here into the menu terminal new terminal and boom here we have um, this terminal coming up which is just a bash terminal and um, this is all running inside of a, a container um, so I can just see like here's the file system um, I can do .NET and see uh, which uh, which version is installed um, here we go .NET version 3.1 um, perfect um, so you know you have all this the, the terminal things uh, set up for you uh, whenever you work with dot files you can personalize your terminal I will get into that uh, a little bit uh, you can also just you know it all works on git so git has to be installed git status well you can see I modified the um, the readme file so that's great too so this is boom that's just there you can just use that uh, the terminal of course if you're on Windows this will be like either uh, just a regular command and or uh, probably PowerShell um, so you can do that as well okay for now let's uh, put that away um, so let's just actually you know just run this let's see what this project is about uh, so I go to this debug pane right here in Visual Studio Code and I can just simply click the play button here basically um, so I think I can also press F5 um, I think in some instances of browsers F5 is still like the reload uh, so I'm not sure how that will work behave on Windows if you press F5 it might just reload the whole uh, window so be careful with that um, I think they're looking into um, how they should do that as well how they can handle that better but um, you know the play button works just as well um, you can see while I was talking it's just boom a boom loading all the things building all the stuff um, and I think it's running right now so and the interesting thing is like okay just remember that this is all running in the cloud so the heavy lifting happens there um, so this local host uh, link here that's that's nice but localhost 5000 there's nothing running on my machine so that's a problem right so um, if I would go to this local host thing then um, nothing probably happens see here we go uh, nothing's there um, but whenever we um, actually click this link so I put down I hold down command and I click so I think on Windows it's control click um, but it takes me to this special magic URL here and um, let me zoom this in for you a little bit and it actually shows me like the the running project so how does that work um, that works with something that's called uh, port forwarding so I'm just go, gonna go into this project in a little bit but um, let's go back to Visual Studio Code and uh, this says it's like running on 5000 so um, here in the other paint you can see that there's also this icon the little monitor with with the, well probably the code spaces icon so if we go into that we can see well a bunch of things that are um, associated with code spaces you can see another code space that I have running um, which is actually a GitHub action that I've um, 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 edited before as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can see the details of this session. I can disconnect. Okay, that's fine. And down here, you can see the forwarded ports. So um, uh, you can see that two of them are set up now. Um, the top one is probably like the, the regular IPv4. And the bottom one seems like a IPv6. Um, so and, and port 5000 is forwarded. And then by some magic, um, you know whenever you go to that um, local host thing it will automatically pipe that through to your system and you can just see it running here as if it was um, running on your local system uh, this is actually authenticated so if I copy this and go into a new private window um, you will see that it's asked for my authentication first so not everyone can just access it then um, it's just only for you uh, but you can still run this as if it was like running on your own local host um, you can also up like ports for yourself you can do that from right here you can do the little plus and add add forwarded ports here um, or you can add that to the personalization with your um, container we will touch on that uh, in a little bit um, but first let's focus on this project so uh, this does some cool ascii art stuff the the github um, octocad here says something to the net bot it says hello world um, I think if we reload does it do something else no um, okay so what, what I can do is here add a query parameter with a message and say um, hello nice people watching and if I do that then it says hello nice people watching um, so that's that's very cool so this just works very simple project nothing fancy um, if I now go back here and I go to my files 
uh, and you you know maybe I want to uh, put in a breakpoint and see how all of this stuff works. So I go to the index chhtml. Um, you can see all the, the the colors are lighting up here. I can just go in here. I can type message. I can type a dot, and you can see the IntelliSense is coming up. Um, nothing special. Um, everything like you would expect it to work. Um, I can go in here. You can see the tooltips. You can see all the documentation. So everything just works as you would expect it to work on your desktop, right? Um, so what I can also do is now uh, put in a breakpoint here. So check if our message is uh, null or empty. So then whenever I do this and I just reload this, um, now this all runs in the browser. So it's probably not going to take me to that other tab because that's a, going to be a limitation of the browser. But you can see this little um, emoji icon coming up here, uh, which indicates that it's hitting a breakpoint. So let's go over here and we can see indeed that this is uh, now waiting on our input and I can just hover over here over the message and the message is hello, nice people watching. Um, I can dive into non-public members, do all the things here, um, just as you would debug this um, locally. You can step through it, step over it, do whatever, and um, just continue running. So that is pretty cool, right? So the debugging experience is just there. You can just get the full Visual Studio Code experience right here. Um, now, let's see. Um, and one other thing, if we go into like the CSS, so we want to, I don't know, change something uh, and just don't want to stop running all the things. So let's just make the background red. Um, just to see it works and we go here it reloads boom nothing fancy just works um, no restarting of things uh, just as you would run this locally did i already mention how awesome this was okay very cool um so okay let's change this back because the the red is horrible um, there we go, there we go, reload it. Uh, so I made this change to my to my readme. Um, let's actually just stop this debugging session, get it out of here, um, and do that in git. So uh, updated readme, here we go. Whoops, no enter. Um, I think I need to stage this. Uh, that's open file stage, there we go. And update readme and commit that, push that, do all the things. And when we now go over back to my repository and I reload that, um, it should have done that. Didn't it push yet? Oh, it's still doing it. Did it do it now? No, still nothing. Well, then I just go into my terminal and go into this terminal, git push. There we go, no extra credentials needed. I can just push this because it got the credentials from uh, my GitHub account, so it just does that. Push to my main branch, uh, 35 seconds go, here we go. So no problem at all. Update readme, now any questions will come to me. Awesome. Um, while we're here anyway, uh, so let's check out this dev container thing. That is one of the ways that you can uh, personalize this experience. So um, if we look into there, uh, I think the dev container is not specifically a code spaces um, concept. I think it's a concept that works in Visual Studio Code or maybe Visual Studio as a whole. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but anyway, let's just stay with the code spaces. Uh, so you create this folder dot dev container and um, it has a dev container JSON file, which is basically a uh, definition of um, well how you set up want to set up this this code space so um, you can give it a name you can specify some things how to build this dev container um, so you can specify your own docker file so you can just point it to a docker file uh, with all the uh, prerequisites that you have in there uh, it will pull that down create the container with that docker file and you will have all the stuff that you need um, you probably need some some username and some stuff for that um, docker container building. I'm not too familiar with Docker, but that probably has to do with this. Um, now, this extension section has to do all with um, the extensions in Visual Studio Code. So you can just say, okay, um, I want to have these extensions installed. So imagine again that this is a open source uh, project uh, repository, um, the, the Microsoft Docs one, and they say, okay, I think this extension will come in really helpful uh, with people wanting to contribute to this. They just put it in here. Um, that will be added to the extensions that you already have installed yourself. Uh, so that will be synchronized in there. And with these extensions will be installed on top of that. Um, and you can make use of that. 
Um, so remote user Docker file, not entirely sure why that's needed again here. Um, so here's the forward port. So this has the 5000 and 5001 automatically. You can add this, you can do 8080, you can do just 80, you can do um, whatever in here. Um, so that whenever you have a service running on a different port, you can just reach it with this. Here, these settings, I think those are specific to Visual Studio Code. So you can say, okay, my default terminal is bash. I want to exclude some files here. Um, so that's all stuff that you can do as well. So if we go a little bit back, you can here inspect that same Docker file. So we've locked that to .NET Core 3.1. That's the one that we saw earlier. Um, and do some other things. It does some uh, runs some bash script uh, to set up uh, some other dependencies. Uh, installs Node, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, installs Azure CLI, so that should be in there. Uh, so you can totally personalize this code space. Uh, you can make this like a template one, uh, hand this out to all your employees. They will be able to spin this up and have the exact same um, environment over and over and over again. Um, so if we go back one more, um, you can also do some VS Code personalization this way. And the other thing that I didn't really touch on is the dot file. So that's something more like, like the dev container is like the, the personalization of the whole container. The dot files is like your own personal personalization. Um, so I have this dot files test repository, um, which is my test thing. But if you set up a um, repository, which is just called dot files. So the dot files refer to these files that start with a dot, uh, which is actually more of a Linux concept. Um, and those files are used to like configure your, the, the looks of your terminal, or maybe you have some alias command set up. So you, you have an alias set up to say like, um, um, I'm going to go home and then it will do the git push automatically. I don't know. Maybe you have some alias set up that way. Um, you can all do that with the dot files. And whenever you have a repository that's just called dot files, that uh, repository will be pulled into your code space as well. Um, and all the things in there will be set up for you. So you will have all the personalizations um, that are running on your local machine as well as on your code space and everywhere else. Uh, this also works for like the NPM um, package sources, maybe your NuGet package sources, you can also um, hook up here. Um, so for Windows, uh, you want to do this with like batch files and, and PowerShell files. Um, for Linux, you can just use bash files or, or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, the other thing, um, I've done this in the browser, but let's just switch over to Visual Studio Code. Let me just quickly start that up here on the desktop. So this is just my desktop Visual Studio Code, and I have that same, well, actually all the same panes right here. So this looks like almost identical. Um, and I also have this, this remote explorer here, so my code spaces. And you can see it already sees like my code spaces that I've got set up in, in GitHub as well. Uh, by the different icons, you can see this one is suspended, this one is connected and I can just boom, click this one um, and it will connect me in the same way as in the browser and I will just see the exact same thing. Um, and, but now from a desktop, so maybe you're not on vacation with that iPad, but maybe you have like this 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 Chromebook or some light laptop that doesn't have like all the power uh, of your beast of a machine that's in the office, like with a gazillion RAM gigabytes and, and all the cores and all the things. Um, you just have that light laptop, you can just open up VS Code, which is pretty lightweight. Um, and you can get that thing here. So it will be no surprise that whenever I click uh, run, it will just run here as well. Um, and you will see all the same things that we've just seen um, from the browser. So one thing that we uh, have here, like here at the very bottom, um, we can turn on the settings sync. Uh, so that's something that is incorporated as well, uh, which allows you again to personalize some things and you don't even need the um, dot files or, or some other files. Um, it will take the settings, it will take your themes um, and it will sync that all across your different VS Code instances. So, um, you know, you can just have that same look and feel everywhere. It will log into your account automatically. Um, and that is um, how you can do that. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, so actually, the last thing I want to show you is, um, again, the same thing, basically. Um, so let me just close this one and magically switch over to Windows. Oops, let me log in. Um, 
really quickly. And here I have Visual Studio 2019. So full blown Visual Studio 2019 runs on my desktop, um, takes a little bit of more RAM and, and, and um, CPU and that kind of stuff. Um, but whenever you get into like the code space preview, you will get a new button here in this uh, get to code screen. So um, you can see the connect to a code space button. It has the little GitHub icon. Um, and whenever we click that, I'm not going to see the code spaces that I've created earlier because those are Linux based and um, I'm not going to be able to connect to them yet. Who knows what happens? Uh, don't quote me on this one. I don't genuinely don't have any knowledge about this, but who knows what might happen? I mean, we have Linux apps now running on Windows, so that's that's crazy if you think about it. Um, so who knows what happens? And um, here I can create, uh, as you can see, instant types of Windows. So this will just spin up uh, VMs with like four cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, eight cores, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that will probably be expanded in the future with maybe GPU uh, for, for AI kind of things, um, or I don't know what, what it will be. But um, if I just go back here, well, let's take the other repository actually. Uh, so the same one again, just paste that in here. Uh, suspend, so you only want to um, be billed for the stuff that you use. So you can suspend after five minutes, 30 minutes, up to two hours if you're not using it. So it will shut down automatically. Um, I can just create and connect. So Visual Studio 2019 is a little bit bigger than Visual Studio Code. So this will take a little bit more time, um, but you can you will see that it's still a lot less than uh, what you're used to from like the full blown uh, Visual Studio Code. So um, actually here it is, it's already loading, um, pulling down my Git repository, connecting to Visual Studio Code Space, and it should be, I should be able to talk long enough to see it show up. Um, so, you know, and if I can talk long enough, I can, I can easily fill one minute. Um, <laughs> hopefully, because it's, it's taking a bit long now. Um, but what we will see show up is uh, like the exact same experience, um, again, as if you would open a normal uh, project or a normal solution on Visual Studio 2019. Uh, but again, all the heavy lifting is done in the cloud. Uh, you will just see basically your, your Visual Studio is now just like a thin client um, that will just let you edit the files and all the other stuff will happen um, on Azure, of course. So um, here we are, it's still loading a little bit, maybe my machine was sleeping a bit and needs to be woken up. Come on, come on. Oh, actually it's just a cursor that's hanging. Um, and you can see um, all my files are here again. I can just double click this CS proj. Um, it will open that project and um, I can just run it here as we've seen like on the other side from the browser from Visual Studio Code. And um, again, nothing, nothing special here, but now it's just running on a Windows VM. Um, so, you know, you have some, some different stuff uh, to use there. So here we are loaded the uh, project. So yeah, no surprise again, um, there's just that. And whenever we pop open the um, terminal here, you can already see it's developer PowerShell. Uh, but again, you're just um, running on a VM. So um, here we go, we're automatically in our C workspace. I can do LS here uh, also, you can just access the, um, access the file system. So everything is here. I can also do the Git things. Uh, so, you know, everything is here, but now with PowerShell and um, running on Windows. So let's get back to a couple of more slides to finish it all off. Um, so what have we just seen? Well, you've seen a fully featured dev environment. So the whole experience, the Visual Studio Code experience is there, um, but it's driven by the cloud. So no worrying again about installing that, installing the right version, updating your VS Code, none of that. Uh, powered by VS Code, like I said, so um, it runs uh, in a browser, which is very, very cool uh, with all the power that comes with it. Um, it has all the themes you need, so you can switch between that. Uh, the only thing that I mentioned quickly is like the, the, the uh, shortcut keys. So that might be a thing in the browser sometimes um, that you suddenly reload your window, which is not something that you want. Uh, I think there's there's being looked into or maybe it's already solved. Uh, at least uh, something is being done with it by the time that this is launched publicly. I'm, I'm uh, confident that will happen. Um, so the built-in debugger and runner, um, as you would expect it to just work, 
uh, debugger, inspect all the things, um, run, step through your code. Very awesome. Uh, the automatic Git config and GitHub login. So because this is um, coming from GitHub, um, all of that is integrated. All your GitHub credentials or your Git credentials will be imported automatically and you will have all the rights also for private repositories if that's what you need. Um, that will just be in there and you will be able to uh, open that pull request uh, maybe install that GitHub CLI that was recently launched. Um, pull that in with the, the the Docker file or your dot files, and um, you can do it from all from here. Uh, personalization through the dot files and dev container. Um, probably some other stuff that I'm forgetting. So the awesome port forwarding that's in there, um, and much much more. So the best is yet to come. Um, you can sign up again at the URL that's up there. Um, note that it's free in preview. I've touched upon that for a little bit. It's free in preview. Some pricing info uh, is already available. Uh, it might change a little bit. I know the pricing for Windows is not on there also yet. Uh, I'm not sure if there's going to be a free tier. I think I heard that somewhere, but don't, don't quote me on that. Um, and it will probably be very limited to just show you its power and, and it might not be that useful uh, for, for actual development. Uh, but, you know, some costs are to be expected for something that runs on the cloud. Um, it, there's going to be different machine configurations. So Windows is yet to come. Um, it's going to have different specs, multiple CPUs, uh, well, multiple, CPUs, multiple cores, more RAM, less RAM, um, probably some GPUs, um, some GPU kind of machines will be added as well for your AI applications and that kind of stuff. Uh, and probably some other configurations that I can't even think of right now. Um, support for organizations on GitHub organizations will be coming. Um, there's probably going to be something around billing through organizations and the the, uh, the billing there as well uh, desktop app support so what we've all seen now is very suitable for like uh, you know the web services and the web apps and and microservices and console applications um, and that kind of stuff c++ they're working on as well uh, but as you can imagine you can see like the actual desktop things running um, so I'm very confident that there will be solutions for that, uh, that you can actually see like a GUI thing. So if you're working on that WinForms project, uh, that at, at some, in some way that will be brought to you uh, where you can debug it, where you can control it and click the buttons and stuff. Uh, so that's something that will come down the road and probably much, much more. Like with all the scenarios that I've mentioned, um, maybe the, the interviewers or maybe um, something completely different. Um, there is so much potential in this solution. Uh, there will be much, much more awesome um, features in, in this. Um, so like I said, Ignite is going on right now as I'm recording this. So there's probably going to be a couple of awesome Ignite sessions uh, where people will explain some other stuff in more detail uh, or maybe better than I even can. Um, so go check that out. Uh, the Ignite sessions are probably all um, being watched, uh, watchable on demand. So um, go see that. If you want to learn more right now, check out these links. Uh, some of them are used in my uh, presentation. So the demo repository, uh, which is, well, the, the, the project itself is not very impressive, uh, but you can look through the dev container and uh, some other of the personalization stuff and how it's set up. Uh, there is already the documentations on GitHub. They are uh, up on the docs.github.com. So go check that out with some questions that you might have. Um, and all the information, again, that I've mentioned and uh, for signing up with the preview right now, that's the link on the bottom. So go there and um, go check it out. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, this was my session on code spaces. Um, like I mentioned, if there is any questions and anything that you want to follow up with, just say hi, find my contact details, uh, rewind a little bit in this session, you can find them there. And um, I hope you will enjoy the rest of this conference. Um, I've seen uh, a couple of friends of mine. I mean, we're all friends, but I've seen a couple of friends with some great sessions. So go check them out. And I hope you like this uh, session on code spaces. Uh, I got you interested, excited, ready to do it right now. Um, so go check it out and uh, I'll be looking forward to hearing from you.